keeping it real with the Uh <clears throat> Pretty much just here to have a podcast about the love, the grace, the mercy of God, and just uplift Him, give Him His glory. Uh, so grateful to be able to have this platform to to talk about God on. It just will grow. Hopefully, people that listen to us grow. And right. And you know, we're going to use this to show what God's did in our lives and where He's moving us farther to, and uh, just the ways that we. <clears throat> learn to overcome certain things you know there's still stuff that we deal with a lot you know trying to live this life that you know is a greater life than we've ever lived so you know we're not perfect by any means but you know we're trying to get there right uh, trying to be more like God and less like ourselves we've uh, I know me for uh, God's done some work in me and <clears throat> he's put a call in my in all of our lives to do something. You know, we all have a purpose. We all have a, a plan that God set on us. and <clears throat> We just want to be in the will of God. Absolutely. Be able to reach people the way that people have helped reach us. And God's, we want to be able to plant a seed, water it, and let God get the glory. Right. And, uh, let it grow in God. Because there's somebody, no matter where you're at, there's somebody in your life that you can reach. There's somebody in your life that you can help through certain situations that they're going through just by just witnessing to them, just by just showing them how you overcome them certain situations. You know, uh, we could be a light to somebody because God is the greater light in, in all of us, you know. We all have that dark place in our lives. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's when you put God's word and you got the... the the word flow through you. I think it lightens your life in ways that you know you thought it couldn't. Right. And as for me, you know, growing up the way I did, and you know, coming from the background that I came from, you know, I think if it wasn't for God's word, I probably wouldn't be sitting here on this platform. I'd still be out there, you know, no telling what. Right. Glory to God, though. Right. Uh, speaking of our backgrounds, you know, we're just telling you why we're doing this. God's done a big thing in our life, and we just want to <clears throat> be 100% just sold out to Him. Uh, right. We want to be His servants. We want to do His will. And uh, <clears throat> since we're on the subject of backgrounds, uh, today we're going to do our testimonies. And I want to make it clear for our listeners or viewers, <clears throat> we are not, we only want to uplift. Right. We don't want any. We're not here to tear nobody down. Right. We're just here to tell you what we what we went through, how we dealt with it, how long it took us to overcome them things, and there's nothing that you aren't going through, and there's nothing that, that has you bound up right now that you can't overcome. Because when you put God in your life and you put His Word in your life and you let people around you influence you in the right ways, God's going to work in that. And, you know, this is a greater life for me, you know. So I cherish it. I try to do the right things, you know. We're, we're all human. We fall short a lot of times, you know. So nobody's perfect. We're not saying that you have to be perfect to live this life. Because a lot of people in the Bible, they weren't perfect. You know, we all have ways. But it's when we let God work in us flow through us, that's when we try to get on the right track, I think. I would go as far to say that sometimes a mistake can turn into a blessing. It can. I mean, you look at the Israelites, and they were out of Egypt, and they were too afraid to go into the promised land that was promised to them by God, and they had to sit and have that season for 40 years in the right. wilderness. To uh, get that junk out of their life. Right. That way they weren't carrying it into the promised land. Right. It was so, hindrance. Yeah. And, Brother James, why don't you tell everybody your testimony? Well, you know, for me, you know, I really didn't come from a church background. I really didn't, you know, live a good life. You know, I, you know, I did a lot of, a lot of drugs. I, I, you know, did a lot of running away from things that, you know, wasn't right. 
and my testimony is, well, you know, my wife and my kids was wanting to start coming to church more. I used to tell her, you know, I'd get mad because she wanted to come to this church. And I was like, man, that's, I'm just not okay with how they believe. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to hear it. I didn't want to, you know, think that there was another way of living out there from what I was used to hearing. But, you know, I wasn't ready to, you know, throw away everything that I was doing, the drinking, the partying, the smoking, the running around, the having a good times. And, you know, I just, to me, I didn't think I was ready for all that. And I was like, man, you, you got to have everything together before you go to church. You can't be drinking. You can't be smoking. If you do all that and you go to church, you're just a hypocrite, you know. And I was like, I don't, I don't want to be a hypocrite. But really, what I was saying is, I wasn't ready to change my life right then. But you know, I came just because, you know, my family wanted to do it. So I wanted to, you know, be like, okay, I'll do it. You know, uh-huh. basically, I wanted to be a good. I guess just say I did it I guess I don't know what I was really wanting but but as I came and as I sat and I heard and I heard and I heard you know there was times that I would go and you know read a little bit see if it was in what they were saying was right and you know but you know as you hear you can only hear so much before you start oh okay like the broken. spirit, the spirit will move on you. You know, I'd be back there, you know, just creeping the back of the pew because I knew in my spirit, I knew that it was right. I was like, man, there's something to this. There's more to this. You know, this is, this life is more than just dancing and shouting and, and everything. You know, you're you're living for something that's greater now. And, you know, I was wanting to give in, but my carnal way of thinking was like, no, nah, it ain't right. It still ain't right. But, you know, the more I, you know, I let myself just go with it, I guess. Mm-hmm. And uh, I started believing in it. Now, you know, I come up here for the first time. I had been going to church probably for like three years. And I come to the altar for the first time. You know, I repented. You know, I tried to seek after the Holy Ghost. I didn't get it right off the bat, you know. And, uh, but, you know, it, that doesn't mean that, you know, I wasn't, it wasn't promised to me because I ended up, did, I did end up receiving the Holy Ghost, but it was a while down the road. And mm-hmm. I think, I think it was because God wanted me to get some junk out of my life, right. you know. And some people was like, well, you just didn't know how to react to the Spirit. And that might have been true, too, because I was all new to all this. This wasn't, right. I didn't come from a Pentecostal background, you know. My background was nothing really. I mean, I went to a Baptist church, but my background was more or less me partying and running the streets and, you know, just doing dirt work, you know, you yeah. know, running with people that wasn't right, selling drugs, doing drugs, you know, sleeping with this person and that person. But, you know, when I got into church and I really found God, that's when everything changed, you know, before I really, really started seeking after God, you know, I'd, I'd still go home. I mean, I'm not, you know, proud of saying this, but, you know, I'd go home and still smoke weed. I'd drink every now and then, mm-hmm. you know, and I did all that. But <clears throat> when I found that calling, man, when I when I received the Holy Ghost, man, it was, it, it, it was different, man. I stopped doing everything. I didn't want to do it no more. You know, I didn't want the drinking, I didn't want the partying, I didn't, I didn't want none of it around me, you know, because God put something in me that was so, so much greater, so much, I can, I couldn't even explain it to you now, but, you know, I received the Holy Ghost at the church, but, you know, the devil was telling me, no, you didn't receive it, you didn't receive it, and, you know, I talked to my pastor about it, and he was like, well, you did it once, you can do it again. I was riding down the road and received the Holy Ghost in my truck, so I don't care what people people can tell you anything, but I'm here to tell you, as for me, tattooed all and everything, God filled me with the Holy Ghost. He gave me the Holy Ghost in my truck. I spoke with other tongues. I didn't know what I was saying. The Holy Ghost is for everybody. I don't care who you are. When you really dig into this life and you really 
submit yourself to him and, and stay obedient unto his word, man, God can use you in so many ways, so many ways, you know. And, man, I just love it. I love this life, you know. This life is more greater than I ever thought it would be. And I love it. I love it. Yeah, I've known you for about two years now. Uh, well, I got to see all this happen to him uh, as far as the, when the Holy Ghost came into his life. And <clears throat> I got to see the change and we become brothers, best friends, and, uh, partners in this. Oh, yeah. I mean, we work together, pray together. Yes, sir. Uh, and, you know, this is how this is all started, too, because, you know, we used to get together on Fridays. Mm -hmm. And, you know, either I call him or he called me. And we'd be on the phone for what? Two hours. Almost two hours. Just Correct. talking about God, just what God's doing in our lives, how, you know, all the good things that were going on, what we're reading. Right. You know. And we just bounce off each other. And, yeah. Uh, there's a brotherhood here and a unity. And that's really what started all this, like he said. But I got to see that fire lit under him. And he's been on fire ever since, you know. We hit our struggles and our, our seasons. But when we come out of them, we come out hitting the ground running. Like Absolutely. God's been too good to us to oh, man. to not give Him His glory, to not magnify Him. Uh, I'm super proud of you, bro, and I think we're going to do good. <clears throat> Hopefully, we do good. I think we. I know we will, man. As long <laughs> as we keep letting God lead us right. and carry us in the way that He wants us to go, and you know, that's for me. I want to make sure that anything that I'm doing that has our church background or, or, or has God in the background. I want it to be all God. Right. I don't want it to be none of me. I don't want no glorification from it. I don't want nothing. I want it to be all Him. I want Him to flow through me in every way. You know, and I think when we do that, we, we open ourselves up to the spiritual side that we For haven't sure. really really thought we could reach. For sure. Yeah, I know, uh, for me, uh, my testimony is pretty much pretty similar to yours. Um, as a kid, I was brought up in Pentecostal church, but I, my parents quit going, and I was pretty young when they quit going, so I stopped going. <clears throat> um, at 16 years old, I was uh, already doing methamphetamine, and drinking, smoking weed, and popping pills, doing anything that was in front of me. And uh, Going through a, my mom and dad went through a divorce. I guess it's, I guess you can try to blame it on that. But whatever the case is, I did things I shouldn't have done. And, uh, Twelve years of addiction. I'm only 28 years old, but uh, when I was 16, started that, and just went full on, just living the fast life. Um, became addicted to meth and. Uh, been sober from meth now for about five years. Been sober from drinking for about two. Um, done a lot of stupid stuff and didn't really believe in God. Really, uh, I was uh, in my addiction all up to 2016 when I I uh, seen what the meth life was doing to me and I put it down, cold turkey, right. and uh, thought it was my glory, you know. I did that. I quit that. Coach Turkey. That's, that's my willpower. Right. <laughs> it was all God. Bro, <laughs> like, he knew me before I was born. Right. He knew what I was going to do. And he loved me still because he knew where I was going to be. He knew that this day would come. I'd be serving him and mm -hmm. Holy Ghost field. But, you know, I quit meth and I, all I did was compensate it because I quit meth, but I picked up the bottle more. Bottle took me deeper than uh, any drug ever has. Uh, personally, for me, I was drinking uh, a 12 pack, two pints of whiskey a day, and uh, every week, week, weekend day, it was a 30 pack, two fifths whiskey. I spent twenty-four thousand dollars a year on alcohol. Drink so much. I was drinking every day from 2000. 2016, 2019. I mean, I guess I drank every day before then, but really heavy. It was really increased. 
from 2016 to 2019. And uh, I pushed everybody away, uh, my family, friends. And uh, ended up being just isolated. For nearly a year, I was just by myself, drinking myself to, to death. Uh, got to a point where I'm coughing up blood every day. And I wake up and I'm only getting two or three hours of sleep every night. I'm staying up till four in the morning, five in the morning, drinking. And then we'll get up at six, seven, go to work and do it all over again. I'm coughing up blood and I go to the doctor and they tell me that I have a versus liver, which pretty much just means that your liver is not functioning properly. And uh, if I wanted to see 30 years old, then I need to quit drinking or I wasn't going to make it to 30 years old. And uh, when I started all this stuff and you know, all the drinking and all that, as a kid, it was fun. Like I did it just to normal reasons everybody else did it, I guess. I just wanted to fit in, go out with friends, have a good time. But what it started out as fun turned into something that ended up being a tool of the enemy. It turned into addiction. It turned into pain and to hurt and to isolation. You know, God didn't design us to be isolated. But uh, I met someone who ended up becoming my wife. And uh, she was witnessing to me and trying to tell me about Jesus. And I didn't really believe in God. And I got tired of hearing it. It's like, you know, I don't believe in those fairy tales. And I try to make her mad so she'd leave me alone. <clears throat> but uh, she didn't. And uh, she sent me a message one day saying that I don't like you. You're mean to me. You're, you're not a very nice person. But God told me to. I'm not done with you yet. And I'm thinking, what in the world? What do I got to do to get away from this? And it just it shocked me. I was like, she believes in this fairy tale so much that she's willing to do all this. It just it got my curiosity more than anything. So, you know, I go about my life drinking and all that. And then it's around Father's Day. And uh, my dad asked me to come to church. I didn't want to, but it's Father's Day, so I was going to. I showed up late, uh, hungover. And I come and I see uh, Brother Tripp, Brother GL, uh, all these people on the praise team up here singing. Everybody looks so happy all the time. Especially Brother Larry Bobo. Shout out to Larry Bobo. Uh, see him up here smiling, clapping the hands, doing his little foot dance. Right. And I'm like, why? They all look so happy. And I'm like, hurting. I want what they got. They got something I don't got. And then, uh, just in due time, I ended up finding myself. <clears throat> just ended up finding myself, uh, it's almost like God put a spirit of change on me. Right. Like, I just felt inside that something had to change. And I went to a church. Uh, I won't say where, the, where that church was or what it was, but tried out a church and uh, you know I went to the altar but I didn't pray and people were praying over me and they're like you're saved you're saved I remember enough about being my, my bringing up in Pentecost I remembered enough that it wasn't that easy so uh, I started coming full time to, to River Bend Pentecostals in uh, New Madrid and for two months I just sat in the pews and I refused to repent I listened to the word. I was living a repented life. I was, God, <clears throat> when I met, that change came on me, God delivered me from alcohol. Like, I just, I just stopped. I didn't have any withdrawals. I didn't have, you didn't want to no, I didn't. And I tried it, I picked up a beer maybe one time after the fact that I was already coming to church and stuff, maybe six weeks after. And it didn't even feel like you wanted to do it. No. It's like, man, this is. I took a drink. Right. And, bro, I looked at it, and something in my head was like, it's not for you no more. Yep. And, 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 you know, that's how you know if God took it away from you. Because when you try to go back to it, he's going to tell you, hey, uh, I ain't your life anymore. And I didn't ever repent because I felt like I just didn't know. I didn't have the knowledge to to know that 
I'm going to mess up every day. It's okay. But my mindset was I'm not going to go up here, boo-hoo and cry and repent just right. to go out here and mess up again, and it'll all be for nothing, be failure. It's just maturity, man. I didn't know nothing. Right. And when I got to learning, and bro, God's just, he's brought me out of so much, man. He's brought me out of addiction, brought me out of depression, anxiety, everything that he's done for me. Um, I ended up <clears throat> repenting, getting baptized in November of 2019 in Jesus' name. And then I received the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, uh, the following day of Pentecost. And, bro, he's just been working on me ever since. I had a hunger in me like you. You know, I, I fought something just lit up in me, and I was like, God's been too good to me for me to to not give my all to this. Right. When I was on dope, when I was an addict, you know, I did all that I could to get that bag or to go get that yeah, bottle. I'm absolutely. talking about if I wanted a bottle that had no money. You scratch up change. Yeah, I'm digging in the couch. Right. Well, I need to dig down inside and find that want to for Jesus Amen. because he's brought me out of too much. That's right. He, he loved me. I'll, I'll end my testimony with this. I, I believe that anybody that struggles with addiction or anything like that, it's not the addiction that's the problem. It's something that's within them that's the problem. Right. And they feel it with that. I think, I believe that I had some problems. Uh, I've always believed that I, I just never accepted any love from anybody. Right. And when it all hit me, and I mean it hit me just straight in the jaw. You know, mm-hmm. God loves me. He loved me when I was messed up back then, and He loves me now. And that had to really resonate with me. I mean, ever since then, man, God's just been. So good to me, bless me. Uh, I went from an addict and alcoholic to a husband. He turned me from a thief to a, a father, right. a stepfather, and mm-hmm. he's just he's blessed me in so many ways, man. I've this is doing this whole podcast thing. I've always been to myself and shy and isolated. He's he's bringing me out of my comfort zone right. to glorify him. Yep. And if this is what he's called me to do, then I want to do it. 100% I want to be a servant and I want to do what he wants me to do it's not about me anymore I, it's not about Cody I right. want it to be fully about what God wants what God's doing he's moving in my life and I fully trust in him and I know that there's not any situation or nothing that you go through that God cannot intervene in and bring you out of I That's believe right. that 100% mm-hmm. you know I've seen that growth in you from when you spoke in tongues right over Yep. You know, and you've come a long ways, bro. But, you know, even before, you know, there was a connection with me and you, you know, before either one of us had the Holy Ghost. You know? Yeah. Because we received the Holy Ghost not too long, not too far about, apart from about one another. About three months apart. Man, we, I don't know, man. It's like God's just molded us together or something, man, because the more we stay in tune with one another, man, we grow even. Right. God, bro. Discipleship, bro. Yeah. But we're also, we try to put God in our lives every day. Oh, yeah. And I see it, you know, we, man, started a small group amongst ourselves, you know, wanting more of the Bible, wanting to more, know more and everything. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of things we've had our hands in. A lot of growth. A lot of growth. A lot of growth. We've matured a lot of God. Recognizing that we're not never going to be perfect. Yeah. So, uh, Brother GL, the pastor of the church, he's <laughs> he's been a blessing in my life. He's Amen. taught me so much. He's I want to pour out what's been poured into me. Uh, Brother Tripp, Brother Richard, Brother Larry, right? Um, Brother Shannon, all these people that just came into our my that I just kind of walked in here. So I guess I walked into their life. But, right. But uh, they've been a blessing to me, man. Uh, I never want to get to a point where I just I'm not thankful. Right. Like there's. We got to be thankful. So so much. Because you know, we got a lot to be thankful about. Oh for sure. Because man, you know, like sometimes man, I sometimes I go through a season or a funk, mm-hmm. and it's like I want, sometimes my carnality. I want to quit. I want to give up sometimes. Right. But then I listen to a message, or I listen to Brother GL, or I listen to Brother Tripp, 
And so God speaks a word into my life, and it just 100% matches up with what I'm feeling or what I'm going through. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, <sighs> okay, Lord. Like, I hear you. That's why we got to crucify our flesh every day mm-hmm. and try to, you know, separate ourselves from this world because the more you, you live in the world, the more the world's going to live in you and less God can live in you because you got so much junk that mm-hmm. you're putting in your mind and in your heart and everything. Right. And you know, that's why we we, we got to stay in tune with the Word every day. We have to pray every day. You know, you know fasting is a really good thing because you're denying your flesh from anything that you want and saying, no, this is the time that I'm going to give to God. Right. This is, this is God's time. It, it's not mine, you know, because... It wouldn't have been for God going to the cross for us, we wouldn't even be here. Right. Who, who's to say we would have ever made it this far? You know. And because of God's love for us, that's what I want to love like God loves. Right. Like I want to have that compassion and that love that He has for us. I want to have it on everybody I come in contact with. Absolutely. Because that's what's going to reach folks, mm-hmm. showing that love that He shows like us. Exemplifying Jesus yeah. in you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, as we go on, as we move further, uh, we're going to just get into Word, have Bible studies, have people on, like you said. Right. Uh, we're going to get into some stuff, mm-hmm. but this is kind of just our welcome episode. Right. Just, just telling thank- everybody about ourselves. All right. And thank you all for listening, watching. Oh, yes. uh, we look forward to growing with y'all. For sure. You know. For sure. Uh, we want to uplift everybody that's right. in this with us. And this is not... You know, kicking nobody down, tearing nobody down. This is just... We want to set an atmosphere. Right. And uh, we want to, just want to pray out. We'll just pray for we leave. Yep. Lord, we thank you for this, this day that you have given us. We thank you for the podcast you're letting us do. Lord, we thank you for molding us and, and leading and guiding us into your ways. Lord, we pray that your hand stays upon this. And Lord, we pray for anybody that watches it. We pray that they get something out of it. And, Lord, we just thank you and we love you for everything that you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.